So I got the Sony a7C in my hands and it got me thinking, let's put it head to head with the Fujifilm X-T5. Why? Well, both of these cameras boast a small, compact and retro-ish design. And I went for the sleek gray finish on the a7C II because let's be honest, it just elevates the camera's aesthetic. On the other side, we got the Fujifilm X-T5, a great looking camera that comes at a cool $600 less than the Sony. But does that mean we're sacrificing $600 worth of performance? Let's dive in and find out. Firstly, the Sony a7C II, despite being a full-frame camera, surprises with its compactness. Compared to the X-T5, the Sony a7C II is notably shorter, giving it a truly compact feel. Sony opted for a side-mounted electronic viewfinder, providing a rangefinder-style experience. On the contrary, the X-T5 places its EVF in the middle, a design preference that caters to diverse users' tastes. The Sony a7C II's EVF has seen an upgrade from its predecessor, but personally, I still find it to be underwhelming. Uh, the magnification leaves much to be desired. To me, it just sucks. The X-T5 boasts a superior EVF, and which significantly enhances the shooting experience. Turning our attention to our LCD screens, both cameras take different routes. The Sony a7C II screens flips out, catering to the hybrid needs of photographers and for our vloggers. Meanwhile, the X-T5 features a three-way tilt LCD screen indicating a focus on photographers. And even though they focus on photographers, the X-T5 still has robust video specs. More on that later. In the grip department, the Sony a7C II takes the lead in my opinion. It just feels more secure in the hands compared to the Fujifilm's X-T5. Somewhat stinky grip. Dinky grip, not stinky. If you're eyeing the Fujifilm X-T5, you have to get a grip, okay? Consider an, ad an additional grip for a more comfortable hold. I recommend getting the small rig hand grip that I own right here. You can find the exact one that I use by clicking on that link down in the description. It's a great hand grip and it just makes the shooting experience so much better on the X-T5. Now let's touch on the retro designs. Both cameras sports a retro, retro vibe with the Sony a7C II leaning a bit more towards the modern aesthetics. Retro designs are a hot trend nowadays and Sony seems to be making its mark in this space. Fujifilm is the leader in retro designs and has gained immense popularity in uh, like the social media uh, sphere. You got it. Everyone's flooding their cameras on TikTok, Instagram, everywhere. The X-T5 flaunts three top dials does. ISO, the shutter speed, and the exposure, exposure compensation, providing that tactile vintage feel. Meanwhile, the Sony a7C II opts for the, for the two dials, the spam dial and a customizable counterpart. These design differences already shape a unique shooting experience. In terms of custom banks, the Sony a7C offers three banks while the X-T5 takes up uh, takes it up a notch with six. Perfect for organizing film recipes. Both cameras feature a dedicated photo video mode switch toggle, ensuring seamless transitions and separate customization for photo and video settings. The Fujifilm X-T5 has dual card slots, whereas the, only, the Sony a7C II only has one. So the one card slot may be a deal breaker for some of you guys, so that is something to keep in mind. Both of these cameras have a micro HDMI port. And when it comes to buttons and dials, the Sony a7C II gets a nod for its superior tactile feel. Let's talk about image quality. I have a confession, I have a slight bias towards Fujifilm. So that is my go-to preference. For me, the colors on the Fujifilm X-T5 just outshines the Sony a7C II. Now I know this might be like a contentious point, but it's all about personal taste. While I acknowledge that Sony's skin tone did get better and it's not like the old days where their skin tones are this nasty yellow that you know look like you have jaundice, there has been an improvement but I still find myself leaning towards those Fujifilm colors and their captivating film simulations. So now if other camera manufacturers could somehow incorporate their own film simulations, my stance might shift. But for now, when it comes to editing ease and straight, stunning straight out of camera JPEGs, Fujifilm takes the cake. But let's not dismiss the Sony a7C II right now. Uh, the image quality is freaking great. The shots that I captured were razor sharp, crisp, and Sony lenses, especially the G Master series, are nothing short of spectacular. If you're seeking precision and that clinical, that sharp aesthetics, Sony excels in that. Uh, an image looking clinical or having too much sharpness shouldn't be seen as a negative. It's all about personal preference. Let me tell you this. There are moments where I look at my Sony shots and I just wonder, why can't my Fuji 
and do this. There are times where I look at my Fuji shots and then I just think, why can't my Sony does this? Now let's move on to the um, video quality. Both cameras perform admirably, catering to different needs. If you're into uh, vlogging, if you're into creating content where you're frequently in front of the camera, the Sony a7C II with its AI chipset and autofocusing prowess might be your ticket. Sony a7C II supports 4K30 with no crop, but if you opt for 4K 60p, expect a 1.5 times crop, essentially a super 35 crop. On the other hand, the X-T5 handles 6.2K 30p with a slight crop, 4K 30 with no crop, and 4K 60 with a slight crop. Both cameras offer great log footage filming in 10-bit 422. However, Fujifilm provides a bit more flexibility in terms of bit rates and options. Here's where the Sony a7C II takes a decisive lead. It's not even a close competition and I have to apologize to the Fujifilm enthusiasts. Sony's technological advancement have set a high bar leaving Fujifilm with some catching up to do. Sony's autofocusing is imp impressively reliable and in any situation, be it low light or challenging backlight scenarios, it constantly nails focus. On the other hand, the X-T5 just feels a step slower. The eye autofocusing, a, cr a crucial feature for portraits, performs no notably better on the Sony. When I shoot between the Sony a7C II and the Fujifilm X-T5, I noticed that there were more instances of missed focus on the X-T5. And if I were to quantify it somehow, the Sony's autofocus accuracy hovers around 90 to 95%, whereas the Fujifilm X-T5 sits around 70%. While the X-T5 is considered good among other Fujifilm cameras, it faces stiff com competition when it comes to industry heavyweights. There are times where the Fuji is unsure of itself, and there are times where the eye tracking would say that I got the eye in focus, but then when I open up my RAWs, it would be back focus. And this is one of the quirks that you have to deal with when you are dealing with the Fujifilm uh, system. Sony's autofocus system offers additional perks for video as well, such as touch to track autofocusing on the Sony a7C II. This feature is a feature that I really, really like because it makes you, once you touch it, you all you gotta do is just worry about composition. I wish this feature is on the X-T5, but it is available on the GFX 102. Now, while the X-T5 could potentially receive this through a firmware update, the timeline remains uncertain. And as for now, Sony takes the lead in autofocus for video. It's just more reliable and I trust it more. And I just want to share my personal experience now that I have some significant time with both cameras. Personally, I seek a small compact camera with impressive performance and both the Sony a7C II and the X-T5 delivers on that front. And as time passes by, I really desire less bulk in my kit and I'm willing to accept the compromises that comes with a smaller, more compact camera, a smaller grip, fewer buttons, a single memory card slot, all this in, in a pursuit of a compact body. Whether I'm on a holiday in the winter or the summer, navigating through airports with a min minimalist camera backpack is crucial. Both these cameras excel in looking inconspicuous and avoiding the appearance of a professional grade setup, which I value a lot. <laughs> Looking ahead, I anticipate more road trips this year, especially considering that Spain is just like an hour away from me. For these adventures, minimizing bulk is key and both cameras seem up to the task. Both cameras are excellent with the Sony a7C II surprisingly smaller than the X-T5, a full frame camera in a smaller package, which is crazy. The Fujifilm X-T5 is an inspiring camera and I still find more enjoyment using it. However, the Sony a7C II is not far behind delivering a satisfying experience. And while the X-T5 is $600 less and appears to offer better features like the superior EVF, dual memory card slots, the choice depends on your priorities. Do you want the Sony with its full frame capability, better depth of field, and improved autofocus? This might be the right fit for those prioritizing these aspects. If you value a vast lens selection, the Sony a7C II is your playground. But do keep in mind the limitation of a single memory card. Both cameras have their merits and I'm thoroughly enjoying the Sony a7C II. 
And the Fujifilm X-T5 with its charming qualities remains an amazing camera, even if it's the autofocusing may not be as good as Sony, but that didn't stop me from getting great shots before. Given the choice, would you go for the Sony a7C II or the Fujifilm X-T5? And you can find links to these cameras in the description if you are interested. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing for more Fuji and Sony content. Thanks so much.